I was one of the speakers at a leaders conference in North Texas a couple of years ago, and it was from preachers and elders and deacons from South Oklahoma and North Texas, and it was an encourager conference, you know, I want to encourage you, and uh, I spoke on this topic, spiritual warfare. When it's over, I was standing by my book table and answering questions and, and uh, stuff, and I see this real tall guy crossed arms just staring at me, and I finally met eyes with him. I said, do you, do you need to talk to me? And he said, privately when you finish. I said, okay. So about 30 minutes later, everybody's gone, and me and this guy sit down. He said, I have three kids, and we homeschool. And uh, I've been through some financial problems, but I have a good job now, and we're working through that. But I want to talk to you about my oldest daughter, Emma. We've been very worried about Emma. Three years ago, when Emma was only seven, she started saying some very ugly things that we know she couldn't have come up with on her own. And I said, ugly things like what? Well, she would say, like, I'm going to cut you with a knife, make you bleed. I'm going to hurt you. I'm going to burn you. I'm going to kill you. And we homeschool. She's not getting this at school. So we knew she was repeating it from someone else. And so we, we sat her down. It took a long time. Emma, where are you hearing this? We know you've heard it. Somebody else say it. She didn't want to tell them. Finally, they got it out of her. She said she learned it from Legba, L-E-G-B-A, Legba. And they said, okay, honey, it's good that you told us. Now, who is Legba? He's the one that comes and sits at the foot of my bed every night and watches me while I sleep. Mm. It was demonic. Well, her parents didn't want to tell anybody. They afraid they'd think she was crazy. And so it got worse and worse, and her school uh, work went down, down, and finally they went to the preacher. And they made the preacher decide, uh, promise not to tell the elders. And they said, okay, here's the problem. And they told him about Legba. And he had read my book, and he said, okay, prayer is powerful. Let me come over and pray with Emma. Now, the guy's sitting here telling me this story, and he said, now, Steve, that was three years ago. And when he came over and prayed with Emma, things got a lot better, a lot better. We were very encouraged with the improvement. But it's not over. There's still something I can't put my finger on. And he said, and I love the idea of the stakes with the verses on them, but it's $15 for four of them. I don't have $15. And I said, well, then they're free. I just reached and got some and handed them to him. I said, it's free. Here's a book. It's free. Put those out. Let me know how it goes. He was very thankful. And I drove home. It was a five-hour drive home. Went to bed, and I had a dream that night about Emma. And I had already decided God still used dreams, so I'm okay, you know, with that. And I dreamed about Emma, and I dreamed that we needed to ask Emma three questions, very specific questions. And so the next day, about noon, on Monday, I called the house, and he had, the dad had just walked in the door to eat lunch at home. He was saving money to eat lunch at home and lived close to his work. He answered the phone, and I said, hey, this may sound silly, but I dreamed about Emma last night, and I think God wants you to ask her these three questions. Write this down. Did Legba touch her? Did Legba give her anything? And did Legba introduce her to anyone? So he wrote it down. He said, well, we homeschool. She's right here. I'll call you right back. Five minutes, he called back, and he said, Legba never touched her or gave her anything, but when we said, Emma, did he introduce you to anyone? She said, yes, Daddy. All his friends. Well, if he's a demon, so are they. And she said, also, he invited me to go with him sometime to Funland. Funland? What's Funland, Emma? I don't know, Dad. I never went. I thought it was like an amusement park. And they said, well, do you remember three years ago when this first came up and you told us it was Legba and the preacher came and prayed with you about this? She said, oh, yes, I remember that. And after that, he couldn't talk. He still came every night and sat at the foot of my bed and watched me while I slept, but he couldn't talk. They bound him in Jesus' name, but they didn't cast him out in Jesus' name. What you bind on earth is bound in heaven. What you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. And so they said, well, did he ever leave? She said, yes, Daddy, he finally left because one night I, I noticed he was looking at my sister in the other bed. And he would look back at me and look at my sister. And I realized he was mad because he couldn't talk to me anymore. So he was going to start talking to my sister. And that made me mad. So I sat up and I said, no, you leave my sister alone. You need to go now. And that's when he finally left, when the little girl told him to leave. Mm -hmm. And so I told that whole story to a preacher friend of mine of a big church in uh, Little Rock. And 30 minutes later, he called me back and he said, have you Googled Legba? I said, no, why? He said, just go Google Legba. There's whole websites on how to worship the demon god Legba from Haiti. He's a voodoo god. 
You're supposed to build an altar in the backyard and put his colors are red and white, and then you're supposed to sacrifice a chicken and sprinkle chicken blood on the four corners of that altar, and you're supposed to throw salt over your left shoulder and pour some rum on the altar and then do this chant, Papa Legba, Papa Legba, you're the one that we adore, Papa Legba, Papa. There's a page-long chant. Now, how does a seven-year-old girl, she was seven when this started, learn the name of a voodoo god from Haiti that there's whole websites on how to worship? How does that happen? I don't know, but I know how little kids are. When they see somebody new, they go, what's your name? And they I'm Legba. What's your name? Emma. And maybe that's how it started, because little kids are curious. But 